Dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, welcome to this homily on this 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And today we are reminded of the fact that we are all expected to be good stewards of God's wealth. All the readings are focusing on this. The first reading, Prophet Amos is calling, is speaking against those who are not good managers, good stewards of God's wealth, but who misuse those wealth for their personal gains. In the second reading, St. Paul tells that yes, we are God's stewards and therefore to fulfill our responsibilities, we need your prayer because without the grace of God, we cannot do it. And in the gospel we have from chapter 16 of St. Luke's gospel, the parable of the dishonest but shrewd servant who is praised by the master for his shrewdness. So, the wealth that we are given to steward must become the means of our eternal life in heaven, tells Jesus. In the gospel passage, Jesus tells his disciples a confusing parable where the actions of a steward really were immoral, but still he is praised and not scolded by the master. The first question that comes to mind is why did the master ignore the dishonesty of the manager, but commended him? What he did is obviously wrong. He was dishonest, and when he was asked for accounts, he further misused the property of the master for his selfish gains. So how can this dishonest man be commended by the master? This is where the contrasting nature of the parable appears, where Jesus says, though the man was dishonest, he knew how to secure his future even through wrong ways. He is seen as a good manager, a shrewd steward, because of his right, correct planning for the future. The Greek word used is phronimos, which is normally translated as wise, prudent, etc. Aristotle, the great philosopher, says it is a practical wisdom, and he calls it phronesis. He considers it the most important intellectual virtue, which helps one to achieve one's goals. And our difficulty is solved by the message of Jesus when he says immediately after the passage, the two comments he makes. The first comment Jesus makes is this, the sons of this world are wiser in their own generation than the sons of light. So the point is not about honesty or dishonesty, but astuteness, shrewdness, or good managerial skills of the steward. For he knew how to use what he had to secure his future. This is true planning, true managing. And we find it among the sons of this world, tells Jesus. And it is true. Every company or corporate, every service provider, institution has their own mission statement. For example, the mission statement of the Apple company is to bring the best user experience to customers through innovative hardware, software and services. And such mission statements are the goals set by the company for themselves. They help the company or the institution to focus on those things they really are those things that are really advantages to achieve their ultimate goals. If the company wants to be relevant, successful, people who work in them, executives and employees alike, from time to time need to examine what they are doing in the light of those plans and statements in order to keep focused and not devote their energies and divert them from their goals. 
This is easy for everyone to understand. What Jesus says is just the same, but in terms of our spiritual goals and ultimate end of eternal life. Unfortunately, a great number just disregard them. For them, everything ends here, but not for us. We are belonging to the eternal world of heaven where the great feast is prepared for us for all forever. God did not give you and me a life so that we finish it here and we enjoy it until we die. God gave us a life that he wants to share with us for all eternity. And we are expected to plan keeping that in mind. This is why Jesus secondly comments, Make friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous mammon, so that when it fails, they may receive you in the eternal homes, eternal habitations. In short, what we have here now must be used in view of that. In the parable, Jesus lauded the intensity and desire of the dishonest steward to secure his future in this world. Jesus wanted his disciples and us to be as shrewd in assuring our place in heaven, the eternal home. We must make use of everything we have and do everything we can to become part of that kingdom when the time comes. Therefore, the question is, are we good managers? And the answer depends on how we use what we have to secure our future, our eternal life. His master was going to discharge him, the steward realized. He has been in charge of all the properties of his master. He was somebody, but soon he will be a nobody. Soon he will have no, none of the things he held dear. He was relying on, he was proud about, proud of. That's why he made sure that he won't be thrown onto the streets jobless with nothing to suffer hunger. But he was making sure that there will be friends who are really indebted to him by bargaining with them. There will be a time where we will be discharged of all what we have. We had, be, we had many things. We had been somebody. But one day we will just disappear. What then? Where will we end up? Who will welcome us is the question. And Jesus says, if you have managed well your time, your talents, your relationships, your wealth, your facilities and comforts, your everything, you will be welcomed in the right place. You won't need to go begging and starving and suffering. You will be accorded a grand welcome into your heavenly homes. When whatever you do, you are doing it keeping in mind the eternal home of heaven. Not to gain personal gains and selfish goals. Not to please others and to be praised by them. Not to enjoy the perishable wealth of this world, but for him and his kingdom where you belong to. You are becoming an astute steward. You act with phronesis. But many people are not as astute as a steward, for they fail to make friends in eternal homes, like the first reading, the people whom Prophet Amos criticizes, who focuses only on the material, perishable homes and making friends with them here. Are we one of them? Another possible interpretation of the parable and to see why the master praised him is that Jesus was in fact applying the parable to himself. Remember the comment of the Pharisees who were saying, this man, Jesus, is dining with the sinners. He forgives too much. Yes, and that was last Sunday's readings. Jesus was in a way squandering God's wealth of mercy and forgiveness, they said. The religious life of the Pharisees was a very meticulous spiritual bookkeeping exercise. 
Everyone had to pray, pay and obey. Anyone who didn't was considered to be a lawbreaker and was cast out. Everything had its price and everyone had their value in that spiritual economy, provided their spiritual books were perfect. Jesus had a different understanding of our value in God's eyes. He was generous with everyone in imparting God's wealth of mercy and forgiveness. So much so that the Pharisees complained, this man squanders God's wealth, which is supposed to be given only to the few chosen ones. So Jesus gave them the parables, the three parables last week and also today. He tells them, the master's wealth is to be freely distributed to all, to be squandered. It needs to be given freely. That's why the master in the parable does not scold the, the steward, but commends him. Just as God the Father will commend the son who is squandering his wealth of mercy. Dear sisters and brothers, on this Sunday, we are reminded of the fact that we are stewards of God's wealth. Let's squander it. Let's give it freely and abundantly to everyone who needs it. And thus we'll be good managers, through which we will secure our right place in heaven. Let us use everything. Let's do everything here what we have in view of that eternal heaven. And that is being a good manager, a good steward. May the Lord bless all of us.